Welcome to part 2 of my ultimate guide. In this one we will be focusing on making our mercenaries powerful and efficient killing machines. We will be adding all possible buffs that the game allows at the moment including food buffs and weapon oils. I will be going over my favorite classes, how they synergize and which are my favorite weapons for each class. There will be important tips on how to build a character's stats and more. So sit back, relax and enjoy. So, let's start with showcasing a fight from where we left off in part 1. By the way, the link for part 1 is in the description below. Go and check it out if you missed it. So we have 6 man group with a couple of marks as low as level 3. The rest are level 5. As you can see, we're against a group of 8 level 6 bandits. On our level 5s we have the steel weapons and upgraded class skills. So here we go. When you're outnumbered, typically what you want to do is keep enemies separated with your tanky characters and finish off one group quickly, then focus the rest. We're using our swordsman here who is an absolute stud. He just erases this archer and has the movement to kite to safety. We will touch on how is this possible later in the classes breakdown. Our spearman unfortunately doesn't have steel weapon yet, so the damage isn't great. Nevertheless, he'll be able to stun lock that tanky enemy and keep it in place. How we proceed in battle is always dictated by the move sequence of the battle. So check it out often and plan your moves. Our archer here is setting himself up with fury for his next shot and putting vulnerability on the Marauder for an easy one-shot kill on our Savage Axeman. We could have neutralized that Archer as well if we had the run basic skill. That's why I like to have it on everybody. This Dagger class enemy stands no chance against our Brute. But in this battle, he's only level 3 with a level 2 weapon. Otherwise, the enemy would have been dead. We're gonna make the best of every situation though and our ranger will swiftly capture the enemy to be sold for cold hard cash. The rest of the enemies are trying desperately to do something, forcing a friendly fire attack on that AOE swing. Our swordsman is in no danger, so we don't need to move him. We're just continuing to shut down the opposition, not giving them a chance to do any damage. The berserker class is one of the strongest tank killers because of their rampage skill and down goes otherwise very tough enemy. As you can see, we are able to dominate in a fight outnumbered and outleveled. Combat difficulty is set to hard, but it looks easy, doesn't it? Now imagine the mayhem we're gonna cause after applying oils, adding food bonuses and grabbing some legendary weapons. Moving forward, leveling past level 6 and 7, your steel weapons will become increasingly outleveled by the enemies. Tanks have a lot of armor and health, damage classes hit harder and also they get specific buffs based on their factions. Here are some examples of the most common enemies. Outlaws get 30% extra damage to units that are already engaged. Guards get an attack of opportunity if they start their turn engaged. So even engaged archer will shoot instead of a punch, so plan for it. Companions get rivalry, which decreases the damage from units they are engaged with. Renegades will get 50% damage if they are surrounded by two or more of your characters. Overall, those bonuses are not awful to deal with. In most cases, just focus down enemies before they have a chance to use their bonus. Even with the renegades, you can just hit your skills and move away so they don't get the buff. Unfortunately for us, our weapon and armor crafting journey ends here. I really hope they will add more crafts in the next patches. From here on, weapons and armor upgrades will mostly come from killing and looting. But before we get into weapons and armor, let's talk buffs and how to get them. So far you've been eating raw wolf meat and grapes. Hey, I don't judge. Up until around level 6, you don't need food buffs. Except for the apple pancakes, of course, they're so OP. There are several types of food buffs, but we will focus on three particular foods. Mutton stew for strength bonus, eel soup for dex bonus, and infused wolf ribs for crit damage. Those are pretty easy to find and make. The mutton stew recipe you get by trading 10 wood to a lady 
at Old Wilbur's Sheepfold, southwest of Stormcap. All the ingredients required can be bought from Stormcap. Marheim's innkeeper will sell you the eel soup recipe for 100 crowns or you can just steal it. All ingredients are available at the local market as well. And finally, the ribs recipe can be acquired in the new region of Harag. Just follow the road past the gate until you reach the first clan village. Buy the recipe from the innkeeper or steal it, up to you. For all my min maxers out there, I should mention that you could make even more complex meals, which are basically combining some of the meals we mentioned and adding alcohol. Examples for those are Heal the Lights and Culture Shock. They provide an extra 5% strength or dex. The recipes for this tier of foods are generally traded for animal fangs at the tracker camps in all four regions. While still around 5-6, it's time to hit those rat infestations. We can get alchemy ingredients required for weapon oils from those. We can get only one brain per infestation and with it we can purchase the recipes. Don't worry about those too much though, because you can actually steal the recipes. The main thing we're after in the rat infestations are the nasty outgrowths. They are the ingredient we need to make pristine essence from which we make all weapon oils. This encounter can be tricky. You need to split your crew between killing overgrowths and killing rats. At the end of every turn, the brood mother will spawn more rats, so you need to keep cleaning them up. A major tip here is take out the rats and galvanize before you actually hit the outgrowths. That will make you kill them way faster. I will make a separate video showing exactly how I do it. Stay tuned. Going back on the weapon oils themselves, there are a bunch of different ones. But most of them are not that good. To be honest, I only recommend using two of them. Sharpening oil is one you can't go wrong with. Reason being, it doesn't need to be activated. It just gives you flat 10% crit chance boost as you equip the weapon. It's very powerful. Using it on a war ball for example is a must because it relies on a crit to perform second attack. You can get it from storm cap or one brain or just steal it. The other oil I recommend is from the new region of Harak. It's called unstable oil. It gives you 30% chance to perform additional hit every attack. You can make it even more efficient by crafting a belt accessory that further increases that chance. It is great on fighters that swing a lot, like axe warriors with rampage. It can even activate on multiple enemies if you hit them with AoE attack. It looks kinda broken to be honest. This one you will be able to find in the golden key chest in the tomb of Harag. You will need to sight with the trackers on the region scenario in order to get access to the tomb. I strongly recommend you do so, because a pair of two unique weapons can be found there. Going back on the topic of gearing your mercs, obviously the most straightforward way would be to fight for it. You can get encounters a level higher than you, with a chance of dropping weapons of an armor of that level. For example, if you have a level 7 in your group, and you attack a guard patrol, you will fight a level 8 guards. You can generally tell if an encounter is against higher level enemies by the color of the icon. Yellow will mean they are higher level than you and red will probably be higher numbers as well. Stay away from red encounters unless you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Keep in mind that some quest groups will be marked easy and their icon will be white but they are actually a level higher than you, just smaller number of enemies. Those are ideal for farming easy upgrades. If it feels too difficult to farm enemies, you can also do some trading missions and check wandering vendors for upgrades. You can find some pretty rare stuff with them. The level of items they sell though will be of your highest level character. I recommend doing both though. Just roam around, do stuff and check all vendors for gear upgrades and rare materials. When it comes to stats, crit is king. Reliable chance to crit is absolute game changer. Your characters will obliterate everything. What you can get when you level up is pretty random. Always get the double crit level ups followed by double damage attribute and double movement. Note that you shouldn't go more than 14 movement. It's becoming redundant. Never put points into constitution, even for your tanks. Don't waste points in willpower as well. To be able to demonstrate better, 
I recruited the Inquisitor Aurea in her axe jail. She gets bad luck on her first level, but it's RNG, so we'll take the one movement and hope for better luck next time. Then we get the double crit, sweet. Then again we're taking double movement instead of primary stat because we can add armor layers later to compensate whatever we need. There are four particular armor layers that I recommend. Serpent layer for 2% crit and 2 strength. You can get this one by finishing the companion's mission that starts in Marheim's Tavern. Falcon layer is 2% crit and 2 dex. This one is the reward for the artist's great hunt. From the same camp you can buy the bard layer which provides 3% crit. And lastly is the layer of the rat. It's 2% crit and 1 movement. Only use this one if your character is hurting for movement. If you craft 50 layers, you will no longer lose layers when you remove them. I've been roaming around doing scenario missions, bounties, looting tombs, you name it. All my mercs are finally level 8 and ready to be showcased. Note that I'm gonna show weapons and armor that got me through the mid game. They're not ideal, but got the job done. From here I'll boost one of my characters to level 9 and the game will scale enemies and the loot they carry to maximum for the current update. And that's what you should do as well. Get everyone to level 8, then boost one character to level 9 using the training dummy at the camp. That way you can farm absolute best gear for your party. You're probably wondering why I didn't mention anything about killing champions so far. Well, in the current update, we're not able to upgrade unique weapons. Meaning that if we kill the champion early, it will drop low level weapon, which will be trash compared to level 10 or more that we can get after we reach level cap. I have a separate video of killing all champions at their max level. Check it out on my channel. Also, the devs already confirmed that in the next update we'll be able to upgrade uniques. So I'm pretty hyped for it. And if you already killed champions, don't worry, don't throw out the weapons. All right, here we are somewhere in Harag's marshlands in our camp. Let's start with our swordsman. So we're using Tinker Profession for the 5% crit. But in the early and the beginning of mid game, you could use uh, Blacksmith for the extra raw damage plus 3 strength. Once you get to the higher level weapons though, switch back to Tinkerer. We're rocking the sharpening oil on our sword. As shield, we're using the banded shield because of the reduced damage from shooting attacks. For armor, this is the crafted armor. A three star with three slots. It's not ideal, but until we can farm the best armors, this provides good utility because we can add layers to complement our stats. With all that, we have 43% critical chance with 92% critical damage, which is pretty beast. Uh, we're using the pocket knife for extra crit damage. As for skills, we went with destabilizing strike. It's a great skill. It does guarantee crit on anything that has no guard. Also, destabilization uh, removes guard. So basically, the next time you hit the same target, it will be a guaranteed crit. We're using, of course, Valor's Duel because this character engages all the time. We're using Counter Attack. This skill is really good when upgraded. What it does is uh, doubles your movement as soon as you disengage for any reason. And also, if you don't, when they hit back, you counter them with a free attack. For the level 8 skills, we went with Disarm. Basically, what it does is uh, stops the target from attacking and applies vulnerability on it. It's great for setting up the next attack by the same character or another high damage character. Next up is our Berserker. Of course, Tinker for crit. She's using um, single target great axe with sharpening oil, medium armor with built in crit, enhanced uh, with the serpent layer for extra crit and strength, crit uh, belt accessory. She's also using one hand uh, axes, so that's why she has both uh, duelist and tormentor. 
uh, like to switch around with her because I can use her for going to the tombs with a one hand axe and torch. Her skills, of course, Rampage, it's a very strong skill. It ignores guard and dishes out enormous damage. We're using Valor's Duel on her because she engages. We use Recklessness for that initial 150% extra damage. And we're using Battle Cry. It's an enormous range buff for everyone for three rounds. So it's very useful. Our Spearman has the plus 5% crit again. She's using the steel crafted weapon, uh, which is very comparable to the higher level weapons because the damage is doubled when used from distance. Sharpening oil. We're using this armor because she's using a lot of spear wool, which is uh, attack of opportunity. Cr plus five critical belt accessory. Uh, all that equals 39% uh, crit with 75% critical damage. Her skill, of course, uh, Spear Wall. We have Valor's Support because she's always close to someone. Team Brutality from Team Spirit. Preparedness for the Fury and Repost when she ends her turn disengaged. Next up is our superstar, Archer. He has 17 willpower. Uh, well, that's because of the Scholar right now, but he's very high willpower. Uh, very high base crit. We're usually using um, Tinker on him, of course, uh, for the crit. But right now he's trying to become Companion Scholar. So his usual crit chance is uh, actually 54%. We're using Hunter's Bow. That's the best we could find so far. It's not a bad bow. Just War Ball is better. We're using Tactician's Jacket for the built-in crit. We're using Critical Hit Belt Accessory. His damage is very high, uh, even though it's only 69% uh, extra critical damage, his base damage is very strong, so he's hitting hard. Uh, we're using recoil shot instead of barrage, because for smaller groups, I find it is more useful. It has utility to it uh, with the slowdown and with the knockback. Uh, it's knocking back 3 meters, especially with in a combo with a vicious shot, it's, it's just insane. Uh, we're using Valor as support on him at the moment, but I will most definitely switch that skill to Valor's victory because he's starting to one-shot stuff very frequently. For the level 5 skill, we're using Precision. Every two attacks he applies Vulnerability and Fury. So with uh, Recoil shot and Vicious shot uh, or any other really shot, he's applying that all the time for the level 8 skill uh, we're going with thrill of the hunt it's actually pretty powerful because um, he's stacking a lot of that extra damage and uh, he's just one-shotting everything in the end and now for our ranger he's using the thief profession because uh, we're stealing and lock picking all the time plus uh, it's a really good bonus uh, two decks and three crit is perfect for him we have this dagger. It's actually, in my opinion, the best dagger in the game right now. Especially the level 10 version is just extremely powerful when it comes to damage. And with every time used, we're increasing uh, the damage by 15%. So with every attack, he becomes stronger. We're using this for the critical hit offhand weapon. Now, this one synergizes with uh, our ability. Uh, we're critting quite often with him uh, because we're hitting from the back, which you have extra crit chance. So his crit is uh, 38 right now. I'm not even using uh, sharpening oil because I wanted to get a higher level dagger first. But his crit capability is insane. His critical damage is insane as well. That's, we're using a pocket knife and, and, and this for the 20 extra critical damage. Now, this throwing axe synergizes very well with uh, right between the eyes because, as it says, the critical hit applies bleeding, and then right between the eyes will have double damage and increased critical damage for targets that are already bleeding. So, insane damages can be achieved with this offhand. We're using Valor's Victory. Of course, he touches things to death. We're using Ordeal 
as a passive he's applying fever all the time so basically every time he hits it's a 20 percent damage increase on the target so even if he doesn't kill uh, his target the next attack after him will most definitely finish the job for the level 8 skills it's a no-brainer 35 percent extra damage from behind this is just insane the numbers are getting insane with this skill it's very powerful that is our brood is our miner but we have a um, tinker companion as well so we're using wrongdoer's mace uh, i think it's one of the best maces that he can use because it's very good opener for the application of fragility uh, which also synergizes with his skills he's doing uh, extra 20 percent damage has extra critical hit chance against enemies with uh, at least one debuff so basically this opener will activate the skill. We're using crafted armor on him for the extra layers. Bandit shield again like our swordsman. It's just a very good to tank uh, multiple uh, enemies including archers. And we're using critical damage bonus which makes it 88% for him because of the high strength. His critical hit chance is very good. It's 38 base plus what he gets from uh, his passives. He's just so strong. This patch, uh, Harax Mar Marshlands, really, really buffed the Brute. His skills are just insane. He's one of the highest damage dealers when uh, maxed out on gear. We're using uh, Weakening Blow on him. It's a very good synergy between uh, Taunt and Weakening Blow because you can use Taunt and then hit Weakening Blow on the same target and then it will be automatic vulnerability. And then you can just use your, um, your basic skill or just set up the target for another high damage dealer. We're using Valorous Duel on him, of course. We already mentioned cruelty, 20% damage and uh, critical hit against uh, enemies with uh, at least one debuff. And on top of everything, they deal 20% less damage to us. And for the level 8 buff, Darkbreaker, uh, it's my favorite skill for the Brute. He's just destroying tanks. Like, nobody can kill tanks faster than this guy. And lastly, we have another Swordsman, uh, this time with a two-hander. We're using Tinker on her. Of course, uh, medium armor with built-in crit. Belt accessory with crit. Her crit chance is a little bit lower. Hopefully she get lucky with her next level up. And uh, hopefully we can find a little better sword on which we will apply the sharpening oil. So we'll be looking at uh, around 45% crit, which is pretty high still. We'll see how she's gonna go. She's our newest recruit. She was not in the part one of the video, uh, but she's been doing her job well. She's great for encounters with uh, multiple enemies, like animal fights, uh, rat infestations, phantom swarm. That's why we are using laceration. She's also using Valor's chain because all her attacks are AOE. Then for the level 5 skill, we went with counterattack as well because just the inspiration when she disengages is giving a lot of utility uh, to go around and like find the enemies that are clustered. I see this skill as very useful uh, for both uh, one-hander and two-hander sword users. For level 8 skill, we went with hardcore training. Yeah, it's, it's useful for somebody that does AoE attacks because sometimes you gotta be in the fire, you gotta be in the poison. This not only protects you, but it also increases your damage. So for her role, I find this is the most useful buff. With this, I'm going to wrap up already quite lengthy part 2 of my guide. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Part 3 is coming very soon. In the final part, we will be going against the toughest enemies, including all the champions at their maximum level. Expect a lot of tips on combat mechanics and deadly combos. How strong can our band of mercenaries be? Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for part 3. Hex out.